Well, I, I think we can get what I need and what I believe you need as we look at these scriptures. And so we're going to start in the book of Isaiah, chapter 57. And we'll read, starting in verse number 15. And I'm going to do a lot of reading because I'm going to read the whole chapter of 58. But he says, For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in a high and holy place. With him also there is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and revive the heart of the contrite ones. For I will not contend forever. Neither will I be always wroth. For the spirit should fail before me and the souls which I have made. For the iniquity of his covetousness was I wroth and smote him. I hid me and was wroth. And he went on forwardly in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, saith the Lord. And I will heal him. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest. Whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Cry thou, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our souls, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast, ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of, the wick of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice be heard on high? Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like as a bulrush and to spread sack like the ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness? To undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Is not is it not to deal the thy bread to the hungry, that and that thou bring the poor that thou art cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. And thy health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, and the putting forth of the finger, and speak in vanity, and if thou draw out thy soul to a hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. And they shall be of thee, or they that be shall be of thee, shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of the many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath the delight, the holy of the Lord, honor, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speak in thine own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, 
and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that he cannot, or it cannot say, neither is ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Father, again I thank you for thy word. Now help us to learn in the long after day and fall more love day. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I see three things. Number one, I see the character of God in chapter 57. Then I hear the cry of God in chapter 58. And then I see the condition of men in chapter 59. But your iniquities have separated between your God. I see these things. I see a lot more here. But I notice in chapter 57 and verse number 15 the character of God. The high and lofty one that inhabits eternity whose name is holy. And I notice that there can be communion with God in this because of his character. He said because of his character he said I dwell in a high and holy place with him also is a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite one. Remember that. That is who God chooses to dwell with. Because everything else rests upon that reality. Because when we come to 58 and 59, we find some sad reality. And when we find those sad realities, we must come back to chapter 57. Because in chapter 57, he shows us the character of God. And because of his character, we find who it requires, how it requires for us to be if we're going to have communion with God. And then we can find also that there is a cure by God because of his character. He said, I will not all or not contend forever. Neither will it be always wrong. He goes on to say, I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him. I mean, he lets you know that there's this cure is about mercy. It is not about that we have not done wrong. He tells us, he said, uh, for the iniquity of his covetousness was I raw and smote him. I hid me and was raw. And he went on poorly in the way of his heart. So God said his cure is about mercy. But his cure is also about ministry. He said, I'll lead him. I'll comfort him. And I'll speak to him. He said, I create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace. To him that is far off. He says, peace to those that are nowhere near. If they're ready to come home. I think of that prodigal. Who the father ran out to meet him. When he was afar off. As he saw him coming. As he saw that prodigal coming. The father went out to meet him that was afar off. But not only was he after that one that was afar off, he'd speak the peace to that one that was near. He went out to the son who had, was outside the celebration. And he went and told him, all that I have is done. The one that had not wandered far off. Can I say that the father is a merciful father. And he has a ministry to cure us from our sin. 
whether we've drifted afar off or gone away backward or we're living in the house of God just going through ritual and religion, God says, I have a cure. I will heal him. I will lead him. I will restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. And I'll create the fruit of the lips. I will heal him. But we see the contrast. But the wicked are like a troubled sea when it cannot rest. Whose waters cast up iron dirt. There is no peace, save my God, the wicked. God says, when they come to the end of themselves, when they're ready, he says, I'll speak peace to them as far off or them that are near. But if they choose to stay in their wickedness, there is no peace. Say it's my God to the wicked. It's not because God did not make there be a lack of peace. God's the one who says, my peace I give unto you. He's the prince of peace. He's the God of peace. He's the king of peace. He has all peace. The lack of peace is not because God did not make peace. It's because they don't want peace. They're going about to seek their own way and establish their own ways and do their own thing. And there's no peace that way. So we see the character of God, the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity. His name is holy. But then we see the cry for God. I see two things about the cry right, right away in verses 1 and 2. I see he cries about their condition. He said, cry out and spare not and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. But not only do I see his cry about their condition, but I see his cry about their carrying on. They were going about living like they had everything right with God when they weren't right with God. They were going through their rituals. They were going through their rites. They were going through their religion. But something wasn't right. Look at verse number two. Yea, they seek me daily. Hmm. They had their daily devotions. But he said, show them their sins. Show them their transgressions. And delight to know my ways. They delighted in doctrine. They had their daily devotions. They delighted in doctrine. They want to know his ways. They want to know. They, I mean, they read their Bible. They were students of the Word. But he's telling them, show them their sin, show them their transgression. I mean, they're going through the motions every day. These are faithful church people. As a nation that did righteousness and pursued not the ordinance of the God, they did like this. They asked me of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. They had their prayer time. They did everything right, but they were not right. And let me say that is the danger of any movement that would make you have to try to work to keep your salvation. But it's also the danger of any of anybody who gets slack in living all out for God. Why? What had happened? I mean, they questioned God's methods. They acted right, but they ain't right. That's act right, ain't right. But they questioned God's methods. Wherefore, if we fasted, say they, and thou seest not. 
I mean, we're doing it. We're coming to church Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, Thursday nights. We're praying, we're studying our Bible, we're memorizing Scripture. We're doing it. But you act like you don't even see it. Wherefore are we afflicted our souls that that can now take us? No knowledge. So he says, cry about their condition, cry about their carryings on, and then cry about their changelessness. They've never changed. And I'm not talking about lost people that have never changed. I'm talking about God's people have become changeless. He says, Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labor. You've ch not changed in your attitude and you've not changed in your action. You keep doing the same thing and it's not working. You're, you're even finding the light in it. You're finding your pleasure in it. You're finding your pleasure in your religion. But it's not working. God wants us, wants there to be a change. Something has to change. It cannot be the same. And this is what he's trying to tell them. They're going through the motions. They're fasting. The Pharisees, they fast twice a week. Give tithes of all they have. They gave tithes of their mint and rue. I mean, I picture this. They take a, a mint, a piece of a mint a plant, and they say one leaf to God, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine leaves to me. One leaf to God. I mean, they make sure they're doing it right. Something's missing. Cry out about their changes. See, I put it down, I wrote down a note that said, they got high on their holiness. All of a sudden, they thought they were something because they did something. But nothing changed. Something has to change. And so he asked them a question. Because it's still about their sins. Here's what he says. You fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. See how that is? You fast so you can get what you want. It's about the same. He said, You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice be heard on high. If you're doing it with that attitude, why do you think God's going to listen? If you're looking at this thing saying, well, I'm fasting so I can get what I want. I'm praying so I can get what I want. This is all about me. You have not because you ask not. You ask you receive not because you ask and miss. That you might consume it upon your lust. There's no change in attitude. And if we ever want to be heard on high, we must not just add another ritual to our lives, but there must be a change in heart. Because God says, thus saith the high and lofty that inhabit eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in a high and holy place, him also the humble and contrite spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble, to revive the heart of the contrite one. He says, is it a, such a fast that I've chosen? A day for a man to evict his soul? Do you think God wants you to go about evicting yourself to get his attention? If that is so, 
than those Romanists over in the Philippines and out in Mexico that beat themselves and hang themselves on, on those crosses ought to be able to get a hold of God. You think God wants you to lift yourself so you can get a hold of Him? To beat yourself down? To bring yourself into such a bondage and put such a burden on Him that you're hanging your head low? To bow your head as a bulrush and spread sackcloth and ashes under you? Do you think that's what God wants from you? That's what they were doing. He said, Is it such a pass out of chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Or to bow down his head and bull rush and spread clap, cough, and ask under? Will thou call this a fast and acceptable day to the Lord? Truth of the matter is, absolutely not, for thus saith the high lofty one. And what happens to turn me, whose name is holy? I dwell in the high holy place with him as a humble and contrite spirit. He said, it's not about you bringing yourself down and beating yourself down and tearing yourself down. It's about having a humble and contrite spirit. Mm -hmm. And what they kept doing was trying to bring their own selves into this submission to make it look good before God. And God said, that's not what I want. Because all of it, it's about self. And what can I do? And God's set fast is about selflessness and about service. And he asked his next question, is not this the fast that I've chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo heavy burdens, and let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Are you fasting about the souls of men, the struggles of men, and others' needs? Are you doing it because you want to get what you want to get? Are you doing it so that you can show that you're spiritual, so that you can get God's attention? So that he'll do what you want him to do. Or are you doing it so you can accomplish what he wants you to do? Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel every creature. God's command to us. Pray the Lord of the heart that he sent forth laborers of his hearts. You'll notice how God's command to us had nothing to do with getting for ourselves but going for Him. Giving for Him. And the reason that God is not answering their prayer, even though they're afflicting themselves, is because they had their attitude about this is all about me manipulating God to do what I want God to do. He's asked the question. He said, isn't my fast about being selfish? Isn't my fast about service? Is it not to deal the bread to the hungry? That thou should bring the poor that are cast out of the out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself but from the, thine own flesh? I mean, isn't it time to we start figuring out that what God wants from us is for us to give up us and go for Him. Now I'm not saying you've got to struggle. I'm telling you what He's dealing with them about. I'm also saying we want God to answer prayer. Well, we ought to examine ourselves. Is this our struggle too sometimes? Because God's fast is selfless. God's fast is about service. And God's fast is satisfying. Look at verse number 8. 
Then shall thy light break forth in the past of the morning. Look at verse number 9. Then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and shall say, Here, he shall say, Here am I. Verse 10, then shall the light rise in obscurity. Verse 11, and the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like the water of the garden. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Then, let me say this to you real quick, like church. It's not about ritual. It's not about routine. It's about having a repentant heart that becomes totally dependent on God. Say, God, all I want is thy will be done. And until we come to that place, why is it that we expect God to listen to anything we have to say? If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath from doing thine own pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath of the light, and the holy of the Lord honor thee, and shall honor thee, not doing thine own ways. Then he says, very simple. So it's not about delighting in duty, but it's about delighting in deity himself. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places. Thus saith the high and lofty one inhabiteth in eternity, whose name and hope is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite known spirit. Ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Behold, the Lord's hand is not short that he cannot save. Neither is his ear heavy that he can not hear. God is a. Are we available? Because he said to your iniquities, what? Yourself, folks. Your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid a space from you that he will not hear. All the fasting and all the praying in the world, if we do not have a repentant heart, what we're doing is not going to do anything except for ritual and religion. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are they that are Blessed are the men. All these things that God says, if you want, you have to have a repentant. Now, do I want you here on Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, Thursday night? Do I want you doing your daily devotions? Do I want you to delight in and studying the doctrine. Do I want all those things? Absolutely. But if it's just religion, then we can't we can, we can ask ourselves, well, why are you not answering our prayer? Why are you not answering our prayer? When was the last time God Answer to a prayer. You didn't have to put it out there and plead for somebody to do something. Sometimes God tells you to put it out there, and I'm not doubting that. But what about just watching God miraculously do something? Miraculously, you need. Thank you.